All right, so Scott Clark, one of our tech leads for implementation, is joining us. Scott, thanks so much for, for coming on. Huh. Thanks. Um, so today we're talking about namespaces. Um, as a lot of our uh, users of, of our inner systems technology learn about namespaces in the beginning, you kind of get the basic general definition, logical layer of separation, pairing with databases, things like that. Um, looking at it a little bit more from a Health Connect standpoint and what you do in the field with implementation, uh, what are some of the additional ways that people should know about namespaces and the things that they should be looking for beyond just that basic definition? Um, well, I think, I mean, that basic definition is, is important. I, right. You can just start with, you can use namespaces to separate your kind of logical grouping of, um, of functionality. Yep. Um, particularly as you initiate tests, initiate your implementation, you, you can take advantage of namespaces to create test Right. functionality maybe even test harness um and, and ensure that you're you you have your separation of of code that's going to simulate what you're actually trying to accomplish in in the real world right right so that kind of lends itself to you know if, if someone finds themselves wondering like should i be using several namespaces like you know i if i have you know john and sarah on my team are both working on different projects like should i be having them work in the same namespace use different namespaces kind of are those some of the things that come up when people are developing their integrations in Health Connect where they should be considering, hey, maybe I should have multiple namespaces to separate some of these concerns? You could. I would say <clears throat> typically from a Health Connect perspective, um, the, I think the breakdown of namespaces would be less so between different users and more yep. from a functional uh, right. and perspective. You might have functionally different parts of the organization that are um, just doing distinct things that don't need to be interacting with each other. They don't need to be storing um, the same information. Uh, and that would be a good opportunity to, to leverage different namespaces. Uh, typically, typically the namespaces will be more of a, an architectural decision gotcha. uh, that you'd make and then decide how to assign users to have access or not. Right, right. Gotcha. Cool. So um, kind of taking that thought and, and playing it into what you've seen kind of as one of the tech leads for implementation for this product, um, what are some real world examples you've seen? Maybe some simple ones that kind of demonstrate that example of kind of using it as a test harness, kind of having the user granularity maybe be a benefit, but not not the driving force behind the way you're breaking up your namespaces, right? What are some examples you've seen in the field? I, I think typically um, one one thing that we, we run into is we'll have to interface in, a, in an interesting way with whether it's an FTP server that we don't have access to, or um, connect to a, you know, a data source that maybe we don't haven't enabled the connectivity yep. yet, and we'd like to be able to simulate um, simulate that data stream coming in or going out. Mm -hmm. uh, so one thing that we we've done is is we create a separate namespace to kind of provide the other half of right. what we're trying to do. Whether it's you know if we don't have access to the FTP server or to the um, the data source, we can use that other separate namespace to simulate what we're trying to accomplish or to confirm that, for instance, um, we're copying something around properly um, or just, uh, you know, be able to feed in test data as from the perspective of right. the other side. Right. Nice. 